Thanks to Ben and Laura, we're glad to have you here. We want to welcome in our final discussion panel for the evening. Sherilyn Thomas is the Senior Vice President of Education and Workforce Development for a local outreach organization, You Can. Sherilyn's focus is on job training and placement with the end goal of transitioning young people to full-time employment. And Maria Kim is the President and CEO of CARA Chicago. Maria's organization offers full-service job training, financial and digital literacy, as well as certification courses. CARA Chicago also assists with public transportation and clothing during the job search. And Victoria Russell is with Beam Suntory. She's the Chicago-based company's first ever Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer. Congratulations. Russell has an extensive background. She's helping Beam Suntory stay accountable in its commitment to diversity. Andrew Hines also joins us tonight. He is the program director for Green Corps Chicago. That organization solely focused on the environmental space for jobs in the field of ecological restoration, tree care, uh, landscaping, and, and a lot more. We're, we're going to get to that. We're glad to have all of you with us here tonight. Thank you so much. Drew, why don't we start with you here since we finished with the introduction last. Tell us a little bit about how we know that jobs lead to less crime, but let's put the emphasis on, on the type of job. Do you think the quality of work is also important? Uh, yes, it is. When you look at the quality of work and how work uh, is implemented within neighborhoods, especially disaggregated and disinvested neighborhoods, it is what you see is what you can be. So in terms of looking all at with the, what, we, what we do in terms of landscaping and ecological restoration, we look at the environment. So it's not only just understanding the environment, but also how do we access the environment? How do we use these spaces? And how do we uh, challenge ourselves to be able to clean and green and also keep our spaces that we live in? So the quality of the job is essential uh, to social and economic and upward mobility for young and youth and young adults here and in Chicago. Maria, the, the phrase is, if they see it, they know they can be it. Do you find kids, that's very important for them to see people who look like them in positions of power or just in positions generally, that makes a big difference? Absolutely. Big believer in the concept of you dream what you see. You know, and if people can see individuals who look like them that are putting their tie on or getting their, getting their boots on to go to a job like what Drew just described, they can visualize the future for what's possible for them. And this is a year where we really need to architect the possible for our young people. We've had a year where the whole world is cracked open, where they've seen hopes and dreams kind of shatter. And what can we do to rebuild that? Well, we need to model the possibility and have them uh, see access and opportunity and know that they've got the talent to be able to get right back into the workforce and contribute to their communities as well. Great. And um, Victoria, so some Chicago-based companies like Beam Suntory and Relativity have pledged to hire more minorities, but what is the what is Beam Suntory doing specifically to stay accountable to that pledge? And you know, how are you working with these youth? Absolutely. I think one, actually the creation of uh, my role uh, is key to doing that, right? So to have accountability and oversight for the work that we're doing around uh, diversity and inclusion. Um, definitely tapping more of our uh, resources, whether it's through LinkedIn or Glassdoor or partnerships through the uh, National Black MBA of Chicago, um, DePaul, the University of Chicago, other places where we can continue to tap diverse talent. And I think putting it out there that that's what we want to do, right? I think uh, for us, we've got a goal to get 50% women in leadership by 2030 uh, and 45% representation from people of color. And so I think, you know, saying it out loud, putting it out there that this is what we're going to do and holding ourselves accountable every year to get there, um, even weaving in diversity goals uh, for, for our executive leadership team and throughout the organization are ways we're going to hold ourselves accountable uh, to achieve those goals. Well, Sherilyn, I want to bring you in here. We've talked an awful lot about crime prevention, about education. Talk to us about what you can does. What are your goals and uh, how do you achieve those goals and what are the biggest roadblocks that you see? Oh, great question. Uh, so you can strive to, to build strong families and youth through compassionate healing, education and empowerment. Um, our work in uh, the workforce development space we really want to empower youth and towards their prog on their progress to becoming economically self-sufficient. 
Um, so that that is our, our one of our priorities at UCAN. We believe that um, young people have it within themselves to be successful. We are there as a supporting service, and so that is our goal. And Drew, you're the only guy on the the, the panel, but that's okay. You're holding your own. <laughs> we hear all the time, and, and after Drew answers, anybody jump in on this. We hear all the time the problems in the neighborhoods because there's violence because there are no jobs available. Nobody's giving anybody jobs. But you, do you come into the neighborhoods to give the jobs or do they go to you? I mean, how do we get these kids to realize there are jobs to be had? Well, well, like I'm sure all in will say, it's education. You have to educate and you have to motivate. So, and there's access to a lot of kids don't understand or youth and young adults don't understand jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've been doing this since I was 15 years old. I went to the Chicago High School of Agricultural Sciences. So I literally have been doing this for 30 years in green infrastructure, green technology. You know, went to school, uh, got my degrees, and went up. So, but I did not know that at five, but I knew it at 15. Mm -hmm. So it's about access and education, and it's letting them know that there are jobs out there and for people like us to say, hey, you can do it too. You know, I look just like you do. So, you know. Do the schools get involved? Do the Chicago Public Schools get involved, guys? So, I mean, that's one way we re recruit young folks in our, in our jobs program, right? We reach out to all of our stakeholders, all of our partners, because that, re so again, we have to let them know that these programs are out here. And so our recruitment efforts are, are you know, ex ex expansive. We reach out to churches, schools, um, other social service agencies. Um, we drop flyers off at, you know, businesses. Um, and then a lot of it is word, word of mouth. So we could have uh, supported a young person in a previous program and then they'll tell their friends and then that's how we get, um, you know, the referrals, you know, coming in. And so it, the outreach is, is so important. And I mean, I, I, I can't speak for everyone, but I'm pretty sure that um, other agencies in this doing this work um, we're all out, you know, doing the outreach in the same ways, you know, trying to, you know, hit all of our networks and we really want to get the young people to know what's available and what opportunities are available for them. So Cheryl Lynn, as we start to open up the economy again and move forward into the next year, what are your hopes and, and what are your goals for job placement? Uh, well, the biggest hope is that, um, you know, there are a lot of young people that just have never worked before. Mm -hmm. And so we want to establish good um, professional working habits while they're young, um, because those are transferable skills, right? So the job readiness training that we provide for our young folks who have never worked before is crucial because you don't know what you don't know until you don't know it. Right. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, be learning how to be a worker, how to be in the workforce, how to hold a job, how to conduct yourself on an interview even is very important. And those are skills that can be taught. And, you know, I started working, I was 15 years old and luckily, you know, my mom was right there with me, you know, doing the, um, you know, the mock interviews. And so we know that that's the support that our young folks need. So those are the types of services and supports that we put in place. Um, yeah. also, well, let, me, let me ask you this, and I don't mean to cut you off, but I just want to open this up to the whole panel. How do we dispel the myth that young people don't want to work? Come I think getting the opportunity and right. having access is a part of it. So I think that the assumption is there, um, and it's an unfair assumption, right? So I think right. when organizations are creating internship programs, um, opportunities to gain the skills and experience they need to be successful is key. Um, one thing Beam Centauri has created is a, we call it our T3 program, it's training tomorrow's talent, but it's, it's an early um, entry level program that's going to teach, you know, skills within sales and marketing and building some of those capabilities. So I think we have to get past this assumption of, you know, young people don't want to work or they don't possess the skills or uh, diverse talent, you know, can't get in. We've, we've got to work against that and dispel mm -hmm. those myths and create those opportunities and giving access. Um, and as it was said earlier, right, it's hard to be what you cannot see. So it's really important to see other people kind of out in the community that look like them, that have these roles that is that are doing this work um, and that it's an opportunity for them to do it also. Maria? Oh, oh. Particularly for young people, <clears throat> 
if we think about the Chicago Apprenticeship Network as one example, if somebody said to me, well, where is everybody or why aren't the young people out there? I'd say, well, come check out the Chicago Apprenticeship Network and see the waiting list and how long it is. And we are hustling to ensure that young people have access to rising opportunities in financial services and health services and all the things. And they are showing up and showing out in those apprenticeships, which are key to informing what their careers can look like downstream. Thank you all so very much. Victoria, Cheryl, and Maria, and Drew, be safe, be well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we will be back with final thoughts right after this.